Let's step back for a moment and appreciate something you probably overlook every day. Limestone. Limestone is an incredibly useful rock. In fact, humans have been quarrying limestone for thousands of years. This work has continued over the millennia. And today, limestone quarries have emerged as a major industry throughout the world. You are bound to find limestone quarries pretty much anywhere you might go in the world. Many of these quarries are very active. Other quarries have been closed for generations and are now weathering and eroding away as a consequence of natural geologic processes. Many of these abandoned quarries, like this open pit mine, are now filled with water and are easy to overlook. But if you look carefully, you will see that active and inactive limestone quarries are everywhere. The reasons for this are simple. Limestone has so many uses and applications. It's also extremely common in most areas, and it isn't very difficult to cut it into blocks and slabs and tiles. It also holds up to weathering and exposure. Limestone doesn't last forever, but it does last a long time. The ancient Egyptians used limestone blocks to build the Great Pyramids of Giza, and they have survived for over 4,000 years thus far. It would therefore be fair to say that limestone is one of the most important and versatile construction materials. Not only can it be cut into blocks and tiles, but also limestone is one of the raw materials used in producing cement, mortar, and concrete. Indeed, much of society is literally built on limestone and byproducts of it. If you happen to live in an old house, particularly one located in an area like Eastern Iowa, then there is a good chance that your basement walls, the foundation of your house, consists of limestone blocks and bricks. This may also be true for your place of work or education. Our geology building at Cornell College has a limestone foundation. And each and every day, we walk up and down steps made of limestone that are full of fossils. Of course, you don't only find limestone in old buildings. Limestone remains a popular material for construction and design even today. And it has a lot of other uses too. Many of us see and use limestone every day, whether we think about it or not. Chalk is a special type of limestone. And artists and artisans have been using limestone to make sculptures and furniture for thousands of years. Some limestones are reservoirs for petroleum, oil, and natural gas. Other limestones are used to produce white pigment and filler for consumer products like paper, paint, plastic, and toothpaste. Limestone products are also added to soils to help reduce their acidity, prepare them for farming, and improve their crop yield. Limestone products are even added to some cereals to provide an additional source of calcium. Clearly, there are many different types of limestones. How do we classify them? 
and how do we tell them apart? Let's start from the beginning. All limestones consist mostly or entirely of calcium carbonate. This calcium carbonate may be present in one of two forms, aragonite or calcite. Generally speaking, calcite is more common, particularly for limestones that are truly ancient. In any case, these minerals occur in a variety of forms within limestone. The main forms are clasts and micrite. Clasts are large grains, which you can see with your naked eye. They include lithoclasts derived from weathering and erosion of pre-existing carbonate rocks, bioclasts that include fragments of shells and other pieces of organisms, and intraclasts that formed from erosion of partially lithified sediment. The clasts also include other large grains like ooids, pizoids, and peloids. In some limestones, the clasts are packed together and there is no space between them. But in other cases, the clasts are surrounded by grains of mud-sized particles composed of calcium carbonate. We refer to this carbonate mud as micrite. Micrite consists of particles of calcium carbonate that are less than four micrometers in diameter. If a limestone rock consists mostly of micrite, we say that the limestone is matrix supported. Matrix supported limestones often contain clasts, but those clasts appear to be completely surrounded by micrite. It's like they're swimming in a pool of carbonate mud. Compare this to a rock like this one. This limestone mainly consists of clasts, and there is very little micrite between these grains. They all seem to be in contact with each other. Naturally, we refer to this limestone as clast supported. This distinction between carbonate mud and clasts, and between matrix and class supported rocks, allows us to classify limestones into a number of categories. The most widely used scheme for classifying limestones was proposed by a geologist named Robert Dunham in 1962. It has been updated and proved over the years as well. Overall, the Dunham classification scheme categorizes limestones based on how much carbonate mud they contain. For example, if less than 10% of the volume of a limestone consists of clasts and it is dominated by micrite, not clasts, then we call it a mudstone. But this term is a little problematic. Some geologists also use the term mudstone to describe terrigenous rocks made of clay and silt sized particles of silica. For this reason, when it comes to limestones like this one, it's best to call them carbonate mudstones. If a limestone is matrix supported, but more than 10% of its volume is made up of clasts, then we call it a wackastone. Do your best to avoid confusing wackastones with wackies and gray wackies, which again are examples of terrigenous rocks. Wackastones are pretty easy to distinguish from wackies. They're very similar to carbonate mudstones, but they contain more clasts. 
Moving on, we come to pack stones. Pack stones are simply put packed with clasts. They are grain supported rocks. The clasts touch each other, generally speaking. But pack stones do still contain micrite, just not as much as carbonate mudstones and wacka stones. This, of course, isn't true for all class supported rocks. Some class supported rocks don't contain any mud whatsoever. A grain stone is a class supported limestone that entirely lacks mud. The clasts and grain stones are cemented together by clear granular cements made of large crystals of calcium carbonate. These crystals formed between the clasts during the process of lithification. Overall, carbonate mudstones, wacka stones, pack stones, and grain stones are some of the most common limestones that you are likely to encounter. But there are a few other types of limestone which form in special depositional environments such as floatstone. Floatstones are essentially limestone conglomerates. At first glance, they are virtually identical to wacka stones, but they differ in one key respect. They contain large gravel sized clasts that are larger than two millimeters across. Rudstones similarly contain very large gravel-sized clasts. However, rudstones are more like pack stones and grain stones. They are class supported, not matrix supported. A final group of limestones are called bound stones. Bound stones come in various flavors but they all have one thing in common. They all form when organisms build and maintain frameworks composed of calcium carbonate. Today, bound stones are being created in reefs by biomineralizing animals like coral. Coral secrete calcium carbonate and build massive frameworks that grow over time and trap micrite in the process. There are various types of bound stones which differ in their manner of formation. Bind stones are produced by organisms which simply encrust the surface of the sediment and hold calcium carbonate together. These include organisms like microbial mats, which are layers of microorganisms like bacteria which inhabit unusual marine environments on our planet. Frame stones, in contrast, are created by organisms that produce large rigid frameworks that rise above the surface of the sediment. Coral reefs are an excellent source of frame stone. No matter what type of limestone you have, the final step in classifying it requires you to analyze and consider the clasts within the rock. If the rock is class supported and all of the grains are ooids, then you can call it an oolitic pack stone or oolitic grain stone. Likewise, if the clasts in your limestone are shells of animals, you could call it a bioclastic pack stone. And if your limestone is a bound stone that formed in a reef, you can simply call it a reef bound stone. As is always the case when we're classifying sedimentary rocks, the overarching goal is to provide the most accurate and specific description of a rock as you possibly can a description that has the most use and value.
Ultimately, your ability to classify limestones will depend on your skills when you study them under the microscope. So moving forward, you should concentrate your efforts on developing those skills. They'll come in handy down the road.